Here's Goodnight Olive making her move to take the lead by ahead around the far turn. Grace Kane has nearly 10 lengths to make up. So does Scooby Guando, verifying the leader. Top of the stretch, Tappet Trice is coming onto the outside. Up to the mark is running late behind Master of the Seas. Set piece down the center of the court. Master of the Seas alongside Annapolis. Here's a Luce Princess coming after Maj and Mission of Joy tries to find room between that pair. Maj has the lead. Mission of Joy second, a Lucy Princess third. The champ in front. Good night, Olive chased all the way. Tap it twice. Tap it twice. Wins the Toyota Bluegrass. More memories made today at Keeneland with some stakes action. Hopefully you caught some winners on the card. Hey again, everybody. Jeremy Plonk here with Horse Player Now with the Keeneland look ahead for Sunday, April 21st. It was our final Saturday card of the season here at Keeneland. A couple big stakes races unfolded. Charlie Appleby did it again. He almost ran one, too, like he did in the Maker's Mark Mile. This time, though, in the Elkhorn Stakes, he ended up 1-3. Silver Knot with the win. Boldak, the favorite, ended up finishing third in there. Good effort from John Sadler's Colt out of California to run second. But again, Charlie Appleby just is unbelievable. This horse is not only at Keeneland, but when he brings anything stateside in the U.S., and he's going to have a U.S. division now, so... Look out, American turf scene. Uh, Appleby here to stay. Uh, as far as the action on the racetrack today, we'll review that in just a moment. It was a big morning at Keeneland as well as Toyota Bluegrass winner Sierra Leone was back in action. His first time to work out. One of two that will have between the Bluegrass Stakes and the Kentucky Derby. I'm going to give you a chance to see that for yourselves in just a moment. And I'll take you through the commentary of that workout. Maybe if you're not used to watching workouts, give you a little bit of tip on kind of how to view them and, and what it might mean moving forward towards the run for the roses. Now, just two weeks from today will be Kentucky Derby 150. One week from today, they will enter for the Kentucky Derby. We've got four days of racing left at Keeneland, the Sunday card that we're previewing right now. And then we'll also have three races, uh, three racing days next week, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday to close things out here uh, for the spring meet. So day 13 or 16 coming up. Temperatures expected to be in the 50s on Sunday under cloudy skies. A little cooler than it's been the last few days, but dry. So fast and firm, probably expected at least a good turf course, if not firm. Uh, should be great conditions for racing on the Sunday card. It was Mark Pope Day at Keeneland. The new coach of the Kentucky Wildcats was out at the track. I know Thousands of you around the country are watching the podcast and you're not like, well, big deal though. Basketball coach showed up at Keeneland. It's the Kentucky basketball coach. If you've been anywhere within uh, a three point shot of Lexington, you know how important that is. Uh, the new coach of the Kentucky Wildcats, Mark Pope visiting today. So, you know, the Pope visited Aqueduct, I believe it was in the early 1980s at the racetrack and he uh, had the grandstand and did his mass there. I don't know. I don't know who was more excited, the people to see Pope John Paul at Aqueduct back in the eighties or whether whether it was Mark Pope visiting uh, Keeneland today, but certainly uh, the crowd was excited to see him. Another big day for the horses from Turfway Park. They won four races on the card on a Saturday. We talk about Turfway winning on blue collar days on a Saturday. Four runners from Turfway uh, coming out of races at Turfway Park. One on the card today, including the opener. The opener gave him 26 wins for the meet. That tied the total for all of last spring. So you think about it. This was day 12 the first race on the card, and they match what they did in 16 days last year. Of course, three more winners would come in. We've now had 29 winners for the meet last race at Turfway Park. We talked about this at the beginning of the season, but it's coming to fruition. The Turfway winter scene has gotten better and better and better over the last two, three years. And this year, especially, they're having a bigger say on what's happening here at Keeneland. So some of those stats and trends that we've leaned on for, you know, the last five, six, seven years, starting to turn a little bit here. I mean, you've got to look at the year-round Kentucky horses with a lot more seriousness than you had uh, in past years. So four winners from Turfway today, one of the big stories. Wesley Ward and John Velasquez teamed up to win two races on the card. They got their groove back in the turf sprint ranks, uh, kind of all as expected, I guess. Uh, Ward had been a little bit tepid in the turf sprints this meet, but uh, was back on the beam today. Wesley Ward's two wins today now give him nine for the meet. He's in the lead for the trainer standings. 
uh, going into the final four days of racing, Sunday, and then again, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Two wins each for Flavian Pratt and Luis Saez today. With a couple big-name jockeys out of town, you thought maybe one rider might just kind of take over and dominate today. Didn't work out that way. Uh, riding doubles again for Saez and for Pratt. Uh, excellent days for them, but no dominant rider in the colony. While on the road at Oakland today was Joel Rosario, Florent Giroux, and also on the road today was Jose Ortiz. So those three riders made the road trip. They're all scheduled to be back, travel uh, permitting, obviously, but knock on wood, they'll get safe travels back home. They are all expected to be back at Keeneland for the Sunday card. Giroux did get one win on the road trip to Oakland in a maiden race, but the real reason they were there was because of the $1.25 million Oakland handicap and Jose Ortiz, second in the standings here at Keeneland for the spring meet. He made the most of leaving a Keeneland Saturday for a, you know, a two stakes card at Keeneland like this. He left to ride Skippy Longstocking in the big one point two five million dollar Oakland handicap. They romped to victory, so it was a good road trip for Jose Ortiz, and his great spring continues again. He's got a big chance of winning the leading rider title here for the spring meet with a strong finish. He's right in the mix, even giving up a Saturday. But you'll give up a Saturday to win a race worth, what, uh, $1.25 million. Uh, so a big day today uh, for uh, Charlie Appleby, of course, running 1-3 in the big stakes race. As for yours truly, the handicapping went decent. We had two nice winners, uh, one nice winner and, and one kind of favorite there in Kings Barn winning the stakes race. But it was over $20 in mutuals today, $20.84 back on those two winners. So it took $20 to bet the top picks. We made $0.84, cents, uh, a mild, slight profit on the day. But that continues to run us up the profit for the meet. We're now up to $41.94 up if you bet every one of our top picks for the meet. So we've got a reasonable chance here with four days left of beating the meet and having a positive ROI for the third time in the last four meets. We've done it two of the last three. Let's knock on wood. We don't want to say uh, that you can close things out. We had some bad days last week where we had an 0 for 9 day, uh, a 1 for 10, that kind of thing like that. So it can happen. We just hope it doesn't happen here over the next several days. We want to finish this meet as strong as it's been for us to this point. Carry over in the super high five to the Sunday card. We'll get to that right now. Final race on the program Sunday, the super high five, race number nine. Carry over will be 11,000 895. So 11,895 for the Sunday carryover. Now, we mentioned this morning that the big horse was in action for the three year olds from uh, a Keeneland perspective, that being Sierra Leone. Let's take you to the morning here, the courtesy of the Keeneland TV department, as uh, the uh, morning work was going to be set up here in company with a horse named White Palomino, who's already won here at the meet. Right now, what they're doing with the pony, they're just poning this horse to the pole, as they say. The pole is where they will break off the six furlong pole for a six furlong workout. But this horse is going to work a half mile. So we're waiting to see the second red pole that we're going to uh, break off from here. Just broke off inside the six furlong pole. So as you see, or coming up to the six furlong pole here, just going to gallop easy to this point. And this is how you start out of work. Rider Chris Bond is aboard the exercise rider for Sierra Leone. They're going to pick up the work made in just a little bit. The workmate didn't go with the same pony, obviously. So as they kind of get set here and just kind of get in the stride, know that morning workouts are time from the pole to the wire done by hand by a clocker. So uh, these are estimates. Uh, you know, it's not the official teletimer like we see in a race, but these uh, clockers do an excellent job of catching these horses uh, right on the pole. So you can get a pretty accurate time. Just past the green pole, the green poles are the five eighths markers. The eighth markers are in green. Your red mark Markers are going to be the quarter poles going around the racetrack. So the next one they come up on two is going to be the half mile pole. And that's where this workout's going to start. So you see White Palomino comes right on cue. They just passed the red pole. And there's White Palomino to engage. It's interesting that Sierra Loans have come from behind a horse that doesn't have a lot of early speed. That Chad put this horse, Chad Brown, the trainer, put this horse on the inside in this workout to get the competition up on the outside. In his races, Sierra Leone's used to coming around horses, you know, because he's a come from behind type. So so this is going to get him into the work a little bit more. He's going to be a bit more aggressive as they pass the quarter pole here. And he's doing it really nicely in hand. Look at the arms of the rider here. Uh, Chris Bond, the white sleeves on the inside, not moving the elbows at all. This is great. Not asking for anything. The stride is good, but notice this horse has a little paddle on the front left. If you look at that front left leg, it kind of swims, if you will. Uh, 
that's a little inefficiency that Sierra Leone's had in all the works and all the races. This is just his gait and his way of moving. It's not the best way to stay sound for a long time, but he can certainly race and race very effectively with it. This is a good workout. Splits were 12 and 2, 24 and 1, 36 and 4. The final work is 48 and 4. And look at the way he gallops out here. Beautiful gallop out. 101 and 1 for the gallop out to five furlongs, and then galloped out another furlong to 115 and 3. Excellent workout. If you are looking at Sierra Leone and wondering how he came out of the bluegrass stakes, the answer to that is aces. This is a fantastic workout. And this is the workout where you want to work strongly. We're two weeks out from the Kentucky Derby. The next workout, this is the one that's going to get all the attention. The next workout next Saturday at Churchill Downs when everybody's on the grounds. But that's just a maintenance move. You don't want anything bad to happen. You want to keep the horse happy. You want him to take a little edge off from, you know, not doing anything too strenuous for a, a week. So you got to kind of knock the edges off a little bit so the horse is, you know, relaxed more and stalled during the day and things. But you're not looking for a big-time workout in that last workout. This is the one where you want to see it. Sierra Leone passed that test with flying colors today. He is coming into the Kentucky Derby outstanding. He is going to absolutely be one of the main factors uh, in the race. Now he's got to come from behind style. You can negotiate and and, and discuss with another uh, handicapper whether or not he'll get a clean trip, whether he'll lose ground, uh, whether the track will be playing fast that day. I mean, from a handicapping and gambling standpoint, we can talk about whether or not he's going to be a good bet at the odds, what's fair out of value. But if you want to talk about a horse who's coming up to the race well, his race in the Risen Star was fantastic. That has come back to be a very key race with other horses out of there running well around the country. And his bluegrass was even better than that race. And since the bluegrass, this is the first chance we got a chance to see him do anything of seriousness. And he looks fantastic. So uh, good news out of Keeneland this morning for the big horse. So we'll welcome back our jockeys, Rosario Giroux and Ortiz, Jose Ortiz on the Sunday card. And let's get to our handicapping now. The audience is all gathered around, give you a little extra time at the front of the podcast. And now we're set to go to handicap on this program for a Sunday the 21st. Nine races on the card. There are no stakes races. My key plays of the day in orange will come up in races three, four, and eight. The swing race on the card is race number five by Swing race. I mean, it's part of the early and late pick five. Uh, the race one pick five starts uh, races one, two, three, four, and five. And then race number five is going to start the late pick five. So it'll be races five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Uh, pick six will be on race number four. There is no carryover in the pick six going into the Sunday card. Keelan turf pick three. We should have great turf racing. Uh, turf pick three is on races five, seven, and nine. Again, Toyota super high five in race number nine. The finale does have a carryover for us. 11,895. We're going to get into the handicapping now go to race number one then take a look at the keeneland handicapper selectors box the consensus grid from keeneland.com you can download this to yourself it's a good print function too it uh, prints out nicely on a one pager for you if you want to take this with you to the track or on your desk while you're handicapping from home or out and about in the opening race i'm going with number four hoodlum hoodlum's the only one picked on top by me but others have this horse in the mix everybody gives this horse a top three play in this particular spot we've got starter allowance runners in here going a mile and a 16th they've had to start for a 10,000 claiming tag at some point to be eligible for this race hoodlum's a horse coming off a of wins in three of its last four starts uh he three of his last four starts he's been in the exact of five straight super consistent from the fairgrounds joel rosario back to ride uh, again rosario was on the road uh he has not had a good meet this has not been a joel rosario kind of meet but uh still very capable rider we know that uh maybe potentially hall of fame credentials uh rosario will be aboard hoodlum for trainer al stall uh, he's the top pick in here for me. Number one, since you left, is a, another street sense. This one's got some inside uh, speed from the rail. Stretching out from one turn races at Gulfstream in two of the last three. So going around two turns, this horse should show good early speed. Speed from the rail by street sense, who's had another great meet uh, uh, with uh, offspring here at Keeneland. I would expect the one since you left to lead them a long way in this particular spot and be tough to run down. I think the six sitting on go could go with the one and soften that one up just a little bit. So I've got the two speed horses holding on underneath, but the four hoodlum maybe just clocking them and, and catching them at, uh, you know, in deep stretch 
That's the way I see the race. Sitting on go, the one cent you left, the speed, the top picks for some of the other handicappers, the three crazy legs, Hirsch, the top choice in here. Coming out of Penn National Races, interesting pick on top uh, for Kim Nelson on crazy legs, Hirsch, a horse who loves to win races, 14-time winner from 44 starts. And it's run outside of, uh, you know, this horse has been in Kentucky in the past, but has been in Penn National Races uh, over the past uh, half year or so, uh, going back to the fall. So, Crazy Legs Hirsch, top pick in here for Kim Nelson. Uh, I'll go with the four hoodlum, though, to get things started in the opener. Let's go to race number two on this uh, Sunday card. It's going to start the early pick four. Baby race here. We've had five of them at the meet. These baby dashes, two-year-olds, are Wesley Ward territory. We know that. Five of them held so far this meet. Four of them won by Wesley Ward. So if you go back to the beginning of the dirt era, returning to Keeneland here in a spring meet, which was 2015, 82 baby races, 45 Wesley Ward winners. He's got the two in here, Dream Away, as well as the eight, Johnny Come Lately. He hasn't, I don't know if he's run two of them in a race the whole meet. He seems to scratch one when he's got two entered. Dream Away, the two is going to be my top pick in here. If he doesn't go, then you switch to the other Ward in here, the eight, Johnny Come Lately. Dream Away gets John Velasquez to ride. This is a John Oxley, a homebred, a good works in the morning, bullet work here at Keeneland. Of course, you want your horses to have a local Keeneland workout. Do not overemphasize horses. Horses running back second time in the meet in these two-year-old races. Uh, they get bet. They get over bet a lot of times. There's only been, I, I want to say, four of them have won. Uh, again, going all the way back to 2015, 82 races we talked about. I think four of them have been horses, three or four, that have run back second time at the meet. The exact numbers in my written blog, be sure to check the written blog out with all the stats and trends that we don't get to here on the podcast. But uh, Hoot Nanny's the sire of the eight, Johnny Come Lately. He sired two winners in two-year-old races last spring meet, both trained by Wesley Ward. Of course, Ward trained Hoot Nanny back in his heyday. Uh, so the eight, Johnny Come Lately, certainly has pedigree to play. Well, I was a little concerned with Johnny come lately is there's a big gap in the workout tab between March 25th and April 13th. Either the clockers missed a work in between or the horse needed a little time after that bullet workout on the 25th and then didn't work again to April 13th. So I, I, that's one of the reasons why I lean towards dream away of those two, even though the eights kind of got a more exciting pedigree, I think to be a player here right out of the gates. I think the two's got the better workout tab to this point. You got Johnny Velasquez on the two. So I go two, eight and four, nothing uh, too clever in this spot. Clever again is the four uh, for Steve Asmussen. Asmussen hasn't had any success here really with the two-year-olds in recent years. Back in the poly track days, Asmussen used to win a lot of baby dashes here at Keelan, but he hasn't won one in several years. Uh, I think he's got one win, and it goes back to like 2016, 2017, something like that. It's been a long time since asked me some one with a two-year-old, but the four is an American Pharaoh with Rosario board. So, you know, we'll see what happens there uh, in race number two. But I don't see anything too creative in this particular spot uh, to be jumping on. We move our attention to the third race, and as we look in this spot, I've got the three timeless elegants on top over the eight exhilarate and the nine Segesta. This is one of my key plays of the day in race number C uh, three. You're going to see races three, four, and eight in orange. Those denote my key plays on the program. Timeless elegance, uh, great post position in here. I love the move uh, from an outside draw at Turfway last time going around two turns. The Turfway horses are running. They're running big, and they continue to run big, even on the grass. In the past, it was a case where you didn't play the Turfway horses on the grass here at Keeneland. They'd win the cheaper claiming races and the lower-level maiden races here at Keeneland on the dirt but they wouldn't have success on the turf. That's not been the case this meet. you got to kind of change some of your thought process and what you're looking at. Timeless Elegance, Jose Ortiz riding, second start off the layoff. I love the pattern. I love the rider assignment in here. Trainer Jonathan Thomas, high percentage trainer. And, of course, this one's by Warfront, one of the top sires percentage-wise here on the turf at Keelan. So a lot to like. That's how you conspire to become a key play of the day for me. Uh, Timeless Elegance here in race number three. Great post, again, to go that two-turn mile race. As for the other hand, Handicappers, I'm teamed up here with Tom Leach. I love it when Tom and I agree on a horse who could be a fair price. So we'll definitely uh, be more excited about that. Then the others, you know, are spread out. We've got four different horses picked on top amongst the five handicappers. The one star Anise, the seven speak up, and the nine Segesta all get some action in here from the other handicappers. The eight Exhilarate is another war front, right? I like war front as a sire here on the turf at Keelan. He's the sire of both the three and the eight Exhilarate. And Exhilarate's out of the star mare Elate. What a Blue Blood Claiborne Farm runner this is. Homebred for trainer Bill Mott. Hasn't done a ton in the uh, career to this point, but uh, there's a lot of pedigree there to like and respect. And uh, this doesn't look like the strongest three-year-old uh, three uh, 
uh, made him special. Segesta, the nine for Chad Brown, makes sense. Of course, Brown uh, had uh, uh, another win, I think, uh, today. He had, did he have a win on the card today? Brown's horses have been running well at the meet, uh, uh, for sure. And, you know, this is a Judd Mont, uh, second-place finisher last time down at Tampa Bay Downs. Should fit well in this spot. But I love the three in this particular spot. So three over the eight, nine, if you want to go a little bit deeper uh, for some exotics horses underneath for tries and supers. The 11's one that I'm interested in on the underneath side, a Clar uh, Claret Beret. Uh, Brendan Walsh is having a really good week. This one, again, from Turfway, you might get the right price on this one and uh you know giants causeway is the grandsire of course the sire of not this time and and certainly we can see that skip a generation kind of turf pedigree show through i would expect the 11 might be all right here switching from the synthetic uh to the turf so i've got this one the uh three is a key play over the eight nine and eleven is how i'm going to attack uh, race number three on the program Let's move down to the fourth race on the Sunday card to pick six starts here. I've got another key play wheeling right back here. And this one's a price play, 15 to 1 in the morning line. And it is Songbridge. I'm going with the uh, Songbridge here in the upcoming fourth race, the five horse. Songbridge picked on top by Gabby as well, but we're the only two. Uh, we're sharing the island, if you will, in this particular case. Nobody else says Songbridge amongst their top three. This one comes in from Fairgrounds for trainer Dallas Stewart. I chased a couple Dallas Stewart horses today. One didn't really pick up her hooves and run at all. The other one ran decently and came on for a mild close. Uh, Songbridge is a horse who ran third on a uh, in a dirt race. It was all the way back in February 23. This horse has had a really spotty race career. Only four starts and a big year-long gap in, the, in those races coming back from injury. But last time this horse went two turns on the main track was a good third against Comparative, who was already a two-time stakes winner since then. So that was a really good race. So the only time this horse has run two turns on the dirt, which race number four is, Maiden Claimers going a mile and 16th, it was a really good race against a two-time stakes winner. Blinkers go on, sired by Connect. Connect has a really nice percentage here with Offspring on the main track at Keeneland. You'd expect that, Connect being a son of Curlin. So a lot of that Curlin pedigree passing down to Connect, which is passing down to his Offspring, and they run well here over the main. So give me the pedigree. You got a back class um, and a horse who's getting back to what they should be doing. Blinkers on in this particular spot. So I'm going with Songbridge at 15 to 1 in the morning line this is one of my key plays because this is one of the better long shots I have on the card. The eighth sensible choice is another street sense you want to respect over the main track here at Keeneland. Maturity date's one that, like, frankly, horses like maturity date are winning uh during the meet here so maybe you know we're all just trying to do a little too creative in here maturity date is the top pick in here for kim but this is a maiden special weight class dropper for chad brown leaving the aqueduct golf stream scene we've seen these horses run really well on the class drop and when chad brown dropped from maiden special to maiden claimer he wins 38 percent so look you know we're we're trying to buck this one. I don't like the horse on paper per se, but the surroundings and what we've seen so far this meet, you could certainly make a case. And this horse really has soiled form last time running on the turf. So if maturity date pops in here, uh, I've got the horse picked fourth, five, eight, four, seven is the way I've got this one. Connect is also the sire of the four, Colette's Joy. So uh, several different pedigree angles in this particular spot, five over the eight, four, seven. And I think in this particular spot, you're looking at a, a situation with a 15 to one, a horse who's probably going to be, uh, you know, staying at a pretty nice price in Songbridge. Get an exact key box in here, the five with the eight, four, seven, and use those other three horses uh, that I like in here. Um, if you agree with me, if you don't agree, go play the race the way you want to. I'm not telling anybody uh, how to bet your hard earned, but uh, what I will be doing is doing the five with the eight, four, seven, and I'll get first and second in here because if the five runs second, it's going to be better than the place money to catch a nice big exacta here. So uh, I'm going with that here. Five with the eight, four, seven in race number four, uh, my second key play on the Sunday card. Let's go back to the uh, snapshot, see what we got coming up next in race number five. It's the start of the Keeneland Turf Pick 3. Turf Pick 3 will be on races 5, 7, and 9. Uh, this is a five and a half furlong turf sprint. You know I love post three, four, and five in these full field turf sprints. We had a big winner earlier in the week. I think it was Friday. Now in the race today on Saturday, three, four, five, exact a box would have got you about 200 and some to one. Another nice payoff. The Wesley Ward horse, I believe from the five hole, 
got left go at 13 to one, a ridiculous price on that one. Uh, Barre, uh, who won on the turf for Wesley Ward. So the box in the power post three, four, five today worked out, uh, swimmingly. Uh, so I'm starting my, you know, my look in these full field turf sprints. Do I like anybody out of the three, four and five, those advantageous posts. And I certainly do have one I like in here. And that is number three demolition Duke. It's Brendan Walsh, Tyler Gaffleone, strong connections in here. Walsh has had a really good week. This one comes off a good second place finish last time out at fairgrounds. That was off a of June layoff. So second start after the break here i expect demolition duke to run a good one this is a horse that had some back class last year they thought good enough to try the lexington stakes ran fifth of 10 in that one so this is just a first level allowance race and it looks like they found a home with the turf sprint last time because that was a good effort rallying from off the pace got enough turn of foot demolition duke's going to save ground on this particular spot and try to rally while save while saving that ground I can't make a deep closer in a turf sprint, one of my key plays of the day. So that's why I backed off here instead of making this one one of the key plays. Uh, traffic can always be an issue when you've got a horse like this, but you've got the right post to try to work it out and find that trip. Salt spray for Wesley Ward. The 12 has to be respected as well as the 7. Jefe de Abra, that's also Wesley Ward. Again, Ward won a turf sprint today at a big price. It's his second turf sprint win in the meet, and he by far leads all trainers who have trained at Keeneland over the last you know, 15 years or so in turf sprint victories, uh, just a dominant in this category as he is almost in the two-year-old baby races. Could be a good card for Wesley Ward. You got a turf sprint in race five where he's got a pair entered. You've got a baby dash in race number two. So the leading trainer at the meet who won two races on the Saturday card, he's going to be in a very good spot to potentially win at least two more uh, on the Sunday program. But give me the three on top of the two wards in here. If you want to mix the four, the five in, in this particular spot, don't love the four a whole lot on paper. And the five's kind of hard to recommend off the last start, stumbling and losing the rider. But prior to that, you know, the form is just kind of okay uh, in synthetic races at Gulfstream. I don't have a lot of endorsement for the four and the five in here, but I sure do like the three demolition Duke. We'll see if we can't get that one on top of the wards. I wouldn't go trifectas in this particular spot because I think the wards would be pretty well backed. So you're just looking at straight exact as three, 12, three, seven, bet the three to win. If you can get a fair price to me, demolition Duke, fair price to win. Anything over three to one, I'd be happy with. Uh, I don't think we have to take a short, short price, but I would take three to one on Demolition Duke. Uh, you've got to overcome something to play in a, a turf sprinter uh, coming from off the pace as far back as he was last time. So you got to make sure you get a fair price in there. Don't take eight to five, seven to five if the public goes crazy uh, betting uh, the three Demolition Duke in the fifth. Let's go to race number six, hit the back half of the uh, final four here on Saturday. It's there on Sunday. The late pick four starts here in the sixth race. And this is one where Lake Superior for uh, Rick Dutrow is an interesting one. Uh, I don't think he's going to be the favorite. Dragoon Guard for Brad Cox probably goes favorite. A horse who debuted a great pedigree for this uh, Judmont homebred by Arrogate. Brad Cox trains Dragoon Guard. Second place finisher to Otto the Conqueror, who went on to win the uh, Springboard Mile, I believe. Uh, you know, he won some big races uh uh, in the fall uh, last year and into the into the Triple Crown season this year. So Otto the Conqueror, certainly a, a good company line for Dragoon Guard. Uh, you know, you respect the horse, but uh, coming off the layoff, I think the one that's a little sneakier probably is the two Lakes Appear. Not sneaky in the sense that you're going to get much of a price. These two are going to get bet in here. But it's a former Bob Baffert charge, million-dollar Keeneland September yearling, and switching now to Rick Dutrow. That's the part from Baffert to Dutrow. What you think about either trainer personally and their history and, and where they've been in terms of the right and wrong side of the rulings, this is an interesting uh, trainer change from Baffert to Dutrow. And Irat Ortiz gets named to ride. I get the feeling they're here with a uh, serious intent. Uh, so Lake Superior to me, I think, is the one who can beat the seven Dragoon Guard. Number three term, just kind of best of the rest. Uh, comes out of a pretty good race against Yellow Card at uh, Turfway, a race that was run in a fast time and showed some improvement late. I would expect the three to come running here uh, on the back end. But the two favorites look strong in here based on connections based on some of their running lines and expectations. Uh, if you look across the way, Dragoon Guard picked on top by three of the handicappers. Nobody else taking Lake Superior. I would not get fooled by the, the selector's box here. Lake Superior is going to get bet. Um, nobody else is kind of taking the, you know, the sneaky angle or the cynical angle, if you will, that I'm saying Baffert to Dutro. 
but Lake Superior, you know, only listed by me on top and one other handicapper in the top three is absolutely going to be one of the top three betting choices in this race. It's going to get bet. So value play. I don't like this race. I'd want to try to stay away from it a little bit. Uh, I think in multi-race wagers, you're starting a late pick four. It's either Dutro or it's either Cox. So it's probably two or seven. And you just use both probably to get through here if you're looking at the multi-race wagers. If you have a strong opinion on one over the other, this is where you want to push it because anybody who goes too deep in a pick four or a pick five doubles the cost of their tickets. So, you know, if you can cut that down, you can play the same ticket for half as much or play the same ticket twice for the same amount of money. So I'm going to lean to the Dutch row horse there in race number six. But if anybody else wins it, now you're looking at, uh, uh, to me, a big upset situation. Uh, coming up next is race number seven on the card. The turf pick three continues here in the seventh. This is a third level allowance. You don't get many non-winners of three other than allowance races anywhere in the country, but this is Keeneland. And this is basically, you know, a, a dressed up stakes race in, at a lot of racetracks, several horses coming out of the bench and Memorial at fairgrounds, uh, Mensa two, a horse coming in from France. First time for a trainer, Bill Mott, the turf pick three is rocking and rolling here with the second leg in race number seven. And I'm going Going with the uh, Mott first timer from France, Amentitude. Also, top picking here for Kim and Tom. So, we're all on the four, the 10, Kinesi, and the seven, Heavenly Appointed, or the picks for Scott and Gabby, respectively. Uh, Amentitude for Bill Mott. Mott's had three or four of these over the years, first time from France, that have come to Keeneland and win on the grass and allowed company like this uh, he's been down this path before his horses are all running well at the meet this is a group three winner in france in september so a lot of class here and coming back at a mile and an eighth trip that really was right in the wheelhouse for this uh Philly over in France. Uh, she won her group three at a mile and an eighth. She was third in a group three at a mile and an eighth. Uh, she won a listed stakes at a mile and an eighth. This is her trip. Uh, I think she's in a good spot here because I don't think this race has any world beaters to it. The only horse coming in from Gulfstream here in the Gulfstream Turfers at this kind of level you would expect to be effective is Kinesi. Kinesi is Christophe Clement and Joel Rosario. But this one comes off a race on the synthetic. Second start off the layoff. Kind of just got a little tune-up maybe on the uh, synthetic last time. I don't know that. I believe that race came off of the turf. It was supposed to be on the turf. Yes, it was. And then it came off. So they decided to keep horse in the race and, and just get an out out of them. Uh, so probably didn't take a whole lot out of them in that particular spot. But the post is tough for the 10 Kinesi. So um, while I respect the runner, I think Amentitude is going to be the one to beat in here. And I would trust in Mott in this particular spot. I think this is a potential single. Now, the three Blissful, I have to mention this one. Cherie DeVoe trains. Blissful comes off a win at the fairgrounds from post 10 last time. That's not easy to do. Get this with Cherie DeVoe at this current meet. She's had seven horses this meet go off at odds of six to one or, or less than six to one. Five have won and two ran second. It's unbelievable. Seven starts under six to one, five wins, two seconds. Everything she's had is live, has been live on the, everything that's been live betting wise has been absolutely live on the racetrack and run to their uh, expectations. So number three, blissful one to keep an eye on in this particular spot. I've got it four ten three, but if you wanted to move the three up even a little bit more based on that, I would have no argument with that whatsoever, but I don't think we get beyond those three runners in here four ten and three, certainly the win preference to the four and the three, uh, the 10 a horse I respect to be in the mix in here, but a tough post to overcome from uh, that draw for, for a runner who kind of is forwardly played. When, when he fires or when she fires, but she didn't show much speed last time off the bench. So not sure what Rosario, who's not a very aggressive early jockey, is going to do because when Castellano rode this horse, who is a, an aggressive jockey, Kinesi was sent to the front. That's not Rosario's style typically. So from the outside post, I'm not sure what kind of trip Kinesi's going to get, but I do respect the horse quite a bit uh, and the connections. But give me uh, Mott with the uh, first timer from France, Immensitude uh, in race number seven. Uh, multi-race wages though I would definitely throw the three in there uh, as a potential horse to use pick four pick five because Cherie is absolutely rocking right now with everything uh, that she sends out to the eighth race we go and the eighth race is our final key play on the card we've got ourselves a 15 to 1 morning line potential play here trying to come from off the pace sprinting six furlongs it's not easy to do so we took a shot on a horse like this today and it didn't work out for us kind of passed some tired horses and went in the, in the mix a little late but ready to pounce is 15 to 1 in the morning line gets a hot pace in here this is a very i would not play a closer going six six and a half at keelan under normal pace scenarios 
But when I think there's going to be a very hot pace, then the natural fundamental handicapper in me says hot pace, somebody's going to finish. Only two horses on the card today on the main track, one after leading after the half mile. So today wasn't one of those tracks that was just, you know, they weren't running particularly zippy times either. It wasn't a track that was just carrying speed, carrying speed, carrying speed today. So Ready to pounce is a horse with Jose Ortiz, the hot rider. Again, coming back after the win today in the Oakland Handicap. The horse has a win over the track. Late running sort for Neil Pesson. We've seen him with these late running sprinters over the years. You know that with the Pesson barn. This is kind of the way he trains his runners, right? They finish up strong on the back end of sprint races. They get a lot of thirds and fourths, but they need a race to melt down to get the big victory. That's what I'm hoping happens here with Ready to Pounce because I think there's a lot of speed in this race. Ludwig, the one coming off the layoff, is fast early. The three higher standard is fast early. The five, Safa's Day's got early speed. SWAT analysis, the six only knows one way, and that's to try to go to the front. There's a lot of early pace in this particular race. Champlin, the nine, has gone wire to wire and both career starts at fairgrounds for Greg Foley. We don't know how good that one is, but we know the running style confirmed after two starts hasn't had anybody get ahead in front of him yet. The 11 Bushido's uh, uh, stepping up a little bit off a race at Turfway last time, uh, but that horse also has early pace about him. And the outside horse in Salido's had, what, on top in six of the last seven starts at the first call? So there is a just immense amount of speed in race number eight. I'm hoping we can get a closer in here and we're going to get a price on ready to pounce. She's not been bet 19 to one, 34 to one, 23 to one, but you have Ortiz, right? And he's riding well and jockeys do take money. So maybe you don't get the full 15 to one because of Jose Ortiz in here, but there are other horses that are in, in jocks and trainers. that are going to take some attention, but I think with ready to pounce fair odds, given the setup and what she's got to do, you still want to get 10 to one, 10 to one is the, uh, the number we're looking for uh, on this particular mayor to try to get our gelding uh, to try to get there. But uh, there is a fast pace. This is a pace play extraordinaire, but six furlong races at Keeneland rarely are one from that far off the pace. We know what we're getting into, uh, but we're still going to try it. We did see that one first time starter come from out of the clouds uh, for Wayne Mackey a couple of days ago came from what? 10 or 12 lengths back after the opening half mile. It was the biggest close we had ever seen at Keelan on the dirt uh, going six furlongs. So uh, it can happen, but it's going to take a price to make sure that it does happen. So demand some value there uh, in race number eight. To the ninth we go. It'll wrap things up. The Toyota Super High Five, the Keelan Turf Pick 3 finishes up in this particular spot. And again, reminder that the carryover in the Super High Five, just under $12,000. I don't think we're looking at a big long shot in this particular spot. I think we're looking at something very logical. We've got some prices earlier, right? We're just taking 15 to 1 in race number 8 in the morning line. But in the ninth, it's Chad Brown on the turf, and I think he's got the right one and a really good draw in risk threshold. Well-bred daughter of Dabawi. First career start down at Gulfstream Park. Didn't go super fast early in this race, and yet she's still close from seventh to third. Uh, looking for bargains. The runner-up has already come back to win a race. Wasn't prepared at the start, so she gets out of the gate a little bit better here. She had the rail last time, and a lot of times first-time starters from the inside post just don't handle it, you know? Uh, they don't like the space in there. They stood in the gate longer than anybody else because generally they're the first ones to load. Uh, so risk threshold gets away from the inside this time, which will help. I think this is a good draw for her. She's got three first-time starters to the inside. Who knows what we're going to get pace-wise out of them, but uh, I think she's the right one in this particular spot. This is a decent field, but I don't think this is a one of these stellar turf races that you're looking at form-wise at Keeneland and Maiden Special Company and saying, look, there could be two or three you know, future graded stakes horses in this particular lineup. Jonathan Thomas has got a well-bred classic Empire Day dawning down on the inside with a career debut. Brad Cox has the two Manira, but, uh, you know, the, 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 the pedigree is decent on that one. The works are decent, but there's nobody just jumping off the page that uh, have to come out firing in here. I think the one day dawning the best of the first time starters based on the workout tab and, and, uh, and pedigree to hit early. So I've got it four, one and two to wrap things up in this particular spot. I lean to experience. We've seen this meet where horses are first time starters have won some of these maiden races. But the numbers are still way, way like 10 to 1 in favor of experienced horses uh, versus first-time starters. So get a horse that's got a little experience. If you're going to take a first-time starter, you should get paid when you're right and get a price. I don't think the one or the two will be a very big price in here because of the connections. Um, so I've got it set up for one, two, but I think the four wins the race. One of the first time starters, probably good enough for underneath to wrap things up. I would single in the nightcap and just try to get through to the finale and see if you can't get, uh, Brown and Gaffleone home, 
uh, to wrap up your pick four, your pick five, and your pick six uh, on Sunday. So that's it for day 13 of 16, and that'll wrap up this week's versions of the Keeneland Look Ahead podcast. Of course, first post time on Sunday will be 1 o'clock Eastern. Be sure to check out Scott and Gabby on today at Keeneland. you also get Tom Leach's long shot pick of the day on the 1130 show uh, today at Keeneland. I'll update all my uh, scratches and changes and any uh, changes that we have to make to our selections. That'll be updated on the uh, Keeneland website. It'll also be updated on the simulcast feed. And if you'd like to get my updates sent to you, each day, uh, be sure to sign up for my Substack, a uh, free service, Substack, a publishing program where uh, you get a uh, copy from your favorite author sent directly to your email inbox. So uh, go to Jeremy Plunk at Substack and uh, sign up there and I'll send you my updated Keeneland analysis each morning after the scratches come out. And then, of course, uh, there'll be countdown to the crown information there from the 19th season of my Triple Crown Scouting report. We've got a big report coming up over the next couple of weeks, of course, Kentucky Derby coming. So if you want to follow all my information through the Triple Crown and past Keeneland, be sure to sign up free uh jeremyplunk.substack.com and uh get on the list and we'll be sending you content uh each day all right everybody have a great saturday night uh good luck on sunday at keeneland our next broadcast will be on tuesday night when the keeneland look ahead uh premieres at 8 30 eastern for the wednesday card so we'll see you again on tuesday night 8 30 eastern have a great night everybody <laughs>